Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a REST API using Express.js. And in this REST API, we are going to focus entirely on user. And it is going to be a crowd application where we are going to create, read, update, and delete user. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So as we always start, we're going to open our command prompt, then change directory to a specific directory which we actually want to work in. Like suppose for my case, it's going to be applications. You can choose the location where you want to work in. Okay. Then here, let's say mkdir, which is make directory, so to speak and we'll give the name for that directory. For me, I will just say REST API YT, which you simply stands for YouTube. And yeah, this is this. And now with this, we're just going to like change directory to that specific folder, which is API YouTube here. So, just write code dot then it will automatically open in your vs code like this now here we have successfully opened the folder in our vs code and if you if code dot something is not working for you then you can just like drag and drop the folder that you have created inside your VS code, it will also work that way. So that is it. Now to begin with our project, first of all, we need to like open our terminal, which you can also open from this view or use the shortcut, which is control or command and J. Okay. So, okay. Here, first of all, we need to initialize our project, which is npm init dot y. It will automatically create for us package.json with the basic necessities that we need, which is here already. But before even we start writing anything in our project folder, let's first install all the dependencies of packages that we are going to use in this project. So <clears throat> here we're going to say npm install. First of all, we need express. Okay. Then we need mongoose because we are going to deal with user authentication and all this kind of stuff. We need JSON web token, which is JWT. Okay. Then we need we need BioCrypt for encrypting our password, hashing the password and also decrypting the password when like we are trying to log in so that we can be able to like identify the user and all this kind of stuff so yeah this is these are the four packages that actually we need now just click on enter and it will automatically start downloading okay while these ones are being while this is is downloading just come back to our project folder and let's say server dot js for creating the server for our project now inside this server here let's import express where we're going to say fonts express is equal to require express okay then here we'll say const app is equal to express like that because we are actually going to use the app in many ways so we just need to make sure that it is there now this these are the first basic dependencies that really this is the first basic dependence that we really need in order to start writing our code so first of all let's just say app dot use so that our app can be able to use JSON, so to speak, 
which we're just going to say JSON like that it allows our app to use JSON then here we'll say app dot use because we are dealing with users so we're just going to say users okay and then we are going to have requests and response and that is going to give us a response that's going to be a little bit generic welcome to our api server like that okay but this is still didn't make really a lot of changes so also we need other two dependencies which is not mode and dot env so let's just install them immediately node mon and dot env okay oh oh sorry okay the reason i actually stopped is because we need them as development dependencies which means like in installing them we are going to say that's that self we're just going to save them as development environment kind of thing so we don't need them to be like dot dot env yeah then not more not more okay we are going to use just of not more and all this during the time we're trying to solve our project so to speak so okay here in order for us to use that dot env we need to first come here and say require okay then we say dot env which is already there and we'll configure it just config and yeah that is all you have to do in order to make sure that dot env is working with your project so here then we have already created this generic let me say endpoint which we're going to use just for testing then let's do this like let's just come down here and say app dot listen okay give it a specific bot for my case i will just say 8000 and we'll have a function that is going to point toward and fade here we can just say console.log in order for us to see what's happening here listening at HTTP this kind of 8000 nothing really serious this is just something that will make us to see when we run the code and we'll know what's going on so let's go back to our package.json there are a lot of things which are not in place here first of all this test in the script here we don't need it so we need to run our app with dev which means npm run dev kind of stuff and instead of using node, we are going to use node mode, which we already have now. And we are going to serve server.js, which is our server file, this one here. Okay. So yeah, this is actually a minimal and the bare, let me say a small version of our API, so to speak, is still in the basic version. So let's just say npm run dev. Okay. and run it and see yeah now here our server is running but how can we see our server and that brings us to another milestone like there's a there's an extension which is called rest cli i guess is called rest here cli something of that kind yeah cli yeah. rest client here so this rest client here this is how it looks it has around like maybe three million downloads or something of that kind so this extension allowed us to be able to see our endpoint right from the 
VS Code here. We don't need to really get out of this in order for us to view it. So you can just type, go to your extension and type REST client and you'll get the exact thing and download it. Then after this, let's get started. What we are going to do is you're going to create a file and that file is going to be called, for me, like I like calling it route dot rest okay actually the truth the truth is you can give it any name you can't just it is not defaulted for you to call it route i'm just calling it route because this is the way i'm kind of used to calling it like that so i just give it that name because yeah that is the name that for me it feels good to lo to just give it so to speak yeah and this is it with this name like this now what we need to do is the first thing is that we are actually using get okay we're using get so let's just say localhost localhost we are running at the port 8000 yeah i bet 8000 is the port which we are actually running on and if you see from our server which means it's going to be slash users in order for us to get the output that actually is running there so now here like this you just come and click on this send request like this then it will now give you the response of the request that you're working with which is welcome to our api server so to speak so yeah now this is a proof that our server is actually working very very well you know i'm quite sure up to this extent you have you have been following me very well and you have also like got the same kind of output so to speak so okay if you have the same output that i just like have here now it is a time for us to go ahead you know time for us to go ahead and now let's like try to structure the entire project that we're working with here first of all we need model okay and inside our models we are going to have user okay we're going to have user but instead of like this we're just going to write it with capital user like that and inside this user first thing first we need is going to be mongoose i know you're already asking questions what the hell is going on we're just trying to create a schema here and i will walk you through everything as i go through okay like this now we have This is it, our mongoose here. And instead of just continuing with this, let's first finish creating all the other folders that we want to create. In, we want to create in this project. So we have controllers, controllers here, and the inside controllers. We're just going to create one thing that is user.js. Just leave it like that first. Then let's also create something which is going to be called routes and i'm quite sure you know exactly what routes are for so inside routes also the same thing we are going to just say user or maybe you can say users doesn't really make difference Look, yes then yeah that is that now we have almost everything but we need to know that like if we are using things like github suppose we need git ignore okay which will actually ignore those files that we don't want to share them for example if you are pushing things to the cloud there are some details that you actually don't want to push to the cloud those are what we are going to like prevent with this so here the first thing we have is env file which is still within create then the other one is not module because we know not module is just this big folder which has a lot of files inside and if those files are all to go to internet then it will be filling space there for no reason it is good that whoever is going to like get another version of this application will just download it automatic that will even help so yeah that is that and i think even what we need that the last thing we need is to have even that dot env file so to speak even if we're not going to use it immediately, but it is actually good to have it as one of the best practices. So yeah, now 
let's come here and write our schema so to speak let's come here and write our schema so our schema here okay we are going to first say fonts because we are using we are actually creating for users so we'll just say user schema like this is equal to new mongoose dot schema okay which actually here we're just going to focus on things that we want to create for a specific user like username full name password email all these basics you know that is exactly what we're going to create here and what we are doing here is just like a bare bone we are trying to set a structure that you need a database to follow so to speak here we have username okay and within the username we have type and the username is going to be of type is string okay and then we have required which we are going to set to true and at the same time unique okay sorry for that unique which we are also going to set to true okay and now with this information which means now like we have made the username to be this kind of name where like if you type your username supposed to be admin or maybe to be whatever it is and you try to create another different account with the same username it will just yell at you like okay this thing is supposed to be unique and this all kind of thing then now let's just duplicate this thing to like four times or three yeah you know json is like a little bit strict when it comes to this so yeah yeah duplicating it now we have all of this despite the error don't worry about that because it is only doing that because of the repetition so here let's say full name okay then here we'll say email then here last but not the least we'll say password yeah there's really nothing much to change and all this kind of stuff so let's just come here and give it all comma just to take away this bad looking i think we're done here oh okay okay yeah that is that actually then we, we just need to come down here and say what we're just going to say module dot exports which is going to give us use this schema suppose but that is not what we need because we are going to say mongoose dot model is going to give us this and that okay okay now this is it so we have our model all made up now we need to come to controller here and one thing that really like we need to focus on when it comes to the term of controllers is that controller is actually where we create all these functionality sign up functionality login functionality delete functionality update functionality all these kind of juicy functionalities are all going to exist within this controller here so like okay to get it started we're just going to say okay i'm just using it on my own term though but you don't really need to do that i think it is not necessary okay either you put it or not it will not really do anything so we need some few dependencies the first of them all is going to be ha ah, look at them i'm typing as if require okay here we just need the same thing like nothing much to worry about then after this we need jwt jwt which is going to be json web token web token okay then after this we need user 
which is going to equal to that and oh yeah actually that's right and we have user right that is that and now before we start writing our endpoints which means like before we start creating functions for sign up for login and all this kind of stuff we need a helper function so here we need a helper function okay this helper function is going to be called async async middleware and it takes in parameter which is called fn for function you can call it function whatever the name you're going to give it so long like you will follow the implementation to the end then it is going to return a function that is going to take in request response and next then after this like we're just going to say promise okay dot resolve okay with that in space one thing we need to do is just to come here and catch the next state okay like that i'm actually calling it instead as if it is really that state you know <laughs> anyway so yeah that is that so let's now work on our sign up functionality which is the one thing that is the first thing that we're going to work on sign up functionality okay so here let's just create a function which is called sign up okay and now we can just like say async and we will have the function which is taking request and response okay taking request and response like that and now we're going to say okay const instead of user we are going to destructure and we are going to directly put everything there like we have username we have full name okay we have email and we have password right we have email and we have password which is just going to give us request.coding what is going to come automatically from outside so to speak and now we need to create try and catch block okay try and catch and as we all know our catch first goes with error and then yeah that is that so let's start with the try block and see what is really going to go on so first of all we're going to say cons here instead of just saying user we're going to say existing user okay because here we are kind of trying to check for existing user which is definitely yeah is going to equal to this and want to find out one of that existing user based on the email okay you see how our project is actually going right now so we'll say if the existing user okay if the existing user this is just like if the existing user is there kind of thing okay then we need something to happen what is it like we need to send a respond okay with a status of 400 okay which is going to send a message and the message is going to be user already exists okay user already exists so here what what is it that we are actually doing what we are doing here is that we are just checking if there's a user which is already existing like with the same credentials so we'll just say okay this is already exists you see so this will have been even enough but just for some few clarities let's check if there's no password okay if there's no password 
then we need something to happen as well and that is going to be like we need to send it is four zero zero uh, why are you getting this for something from so okay here we're just going to say like password is required something like that kind of password is required like that and that is that my friend and yeah let's just try to conclude the hard part of it first of all we, we need to hash our password okay because if for us in, in order for us like to get that password which cannot be recognized we need to use make a use of this dependence that we used we used up or we, we imported up here okay so let's get it started like let's just call it hashed password okay hashed password is equal to okay is equal to await is equal to await then we'll say yeah dot hash which is going to take password and then number of the length of regenerated hashed password that we actually want to see and for our case we just say 12 if you can write anything there no problem but don't write something very long and complicated that is going to give people hard time remembering things or something so yeah now like this we're just going to say const result okay just going to say const result which is going to equal to await it's going to equal to await then our user dot we're going to create it okay we're going to create our user first thing we need to focus on is username then after this we have email now after this we have full name then after this we have email email ah, seriously i can't even say email password okay and our password is going to like equal to our Past password. The reason is because we actually want it to return for us that hashed password instead of our normal password because so that like someone else will not be able to use someone else's credentials since they will not see exactly what is that specific password. It's only known for the owner to the owner, so to speak. I don't know if that English is correct. So yeah, then here we need token. That is actually the reason as to why we have JWT dependent there because we actually want to use this token kind of stuff. So we're just going to say JWT dot sign, which I think here yeah, is part of it is dependence. So like that, then we are going to say email. Okay, that email is going to equal to result dot email whatever email is going to come from result then instead of password we're just going to say id is equal to result okay dot instead of just saying id we are going to say underscore id the reason is because this is actually the id version which we mostly get when it comes to like when it comes to like mongodb and all this kind of stuff so yeah that is the reason as to why we have to put it like that and now like this we're just going to come here and say secret okay secret like this and again we have this instead of same token which we already have we're just going to ask about the expiration we are going to say expires in okay not result expired because we don't have a specific thing for that so for our case we're just going to say five hours okay it will expire after five hours so to speak but now with all this set in one place we need to now look forward to give to send for user okay to send for user that respond that the user need in order to do whatever is going to be done by by the response so that's why we're just going to say response dot status okay 
or this phone is going to be 201, which means everything is good. User is created successfully, so to speak. So we're just going to say JSON. And here we'll just like pass in the result and then we'll pass the token that comes with the result because we really need it when it comes to the real time that we are working with something. Okay, so here we'll just say console dot error is going to be that error okay then after this we need to like to try to respond with something and that is going to be status of 500 and we, we are going to have a json so to speak which is actually going to send a message and that message is going to be something went wrong okay for my case just like something went wrong that is that is all then after this, we'll just give the user some few tips that will help the user to be able to navigate to the next step, so to speak. So yeah, this is actually the basics of how we can be able to handle that. And first of all, let's test this. But before we even do anything, let's try to like export it, okay, dot export. Then here, we'll just say sign okay sign up like that and our sign up is up here if yeah it worked like this now we can be able to like import it from the other files when we're using it in the other places so let's just come to the routes where's routes routes are here so in routes here we need express so we're just going to say cons express is equal to this oh okay like that then after this we'll say cons route or router whatever the name that suits you let me go with router is equal to express dot router like that okay then now after that we are going to say okay we have all this then we need to say router dot okay and for the case like if you have ever worked with crowd application you know exactly how those endpoint work we have get we have post we have delete and at the same time we have patch like we have all these things there but for the case of creating user or signing up you know exactly what we're using we're using post okay then here in this place we're just going to say okay our endpoint is going to going to be sign up that is our endpoint and we need sign up which is already defined okay in the controllers there now it just pulled everything for us from there now before even we go anywhere what we need to do is that like we need to export this okay which is going to equal to router like that now we have export our router okay with all of these so we need to go back to our server and adjust everything before we even try to run it okay but instead of using this one like this we are going to change it to something else but the endpoint will remain the same so to speak like we'll have the same endpoint but we want to change it to something else so that's why we'll just like go ahead of it a little bit like this and we'll say cons okay user router which is going to give us require okay which is that specific router so to speak and just come down to routes and slash i don't know whatever is there users so to speak yeah like that i prefer putting all the inputs suppose on the top so let me let's just take it and put it up there yeah even even in the most top ah. okay let's just put it down here like this yeah Suppose that I know it is kind of a little bit messy, things are not adjusted, but chill, it is okay. 
figure this kind of thing. And now I'm also having a thought of, okay, why don't I just create a port? Okay, instead of like using it like that, why don't I just create a port, which is going to be called like suppose port is equal to process dot env dot port. Okay, or if it is not there, just default for us to 8000. Then instead of listening direct like that, we'll just come here and say port. Okay. Like that. Now it will directly take from our port here, the one we have already defined here. And yeah, before we connect to any database or do anything, I think let's make sure that our application is running despite what. What is happening? What is wrong? Mm, okay, I've got use require a middleware function and I've just use require a middleware function. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It is actually throwing this error because of this, right? So, which middleware function do we really want? The middleware function we need is going to be user. Yeah, user router here. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is kind of understandable. So let's see. What else is the problem again? Check it out. We are having this and we are having option for dot should be greater or equal to zero. Receive type. Oh, yeah, good. Ah, you see that? There are some simple mistakes we can make and debugging them is just kind of a little bit fun, you know? You see through things and try to understand exactly. Okay, that's good. So, yeah, now it is running and everything is good. So now let's connect our database. I know, like, this is kind of a moment that you've been waiting for kind of thing. So, okay, first thing first, we need Mongoose here. Okay, we're going to connect the database inside here. So first thing first, we need Mongoose. I've got too much, yeah, Mongoose. is equal to require Mongoose, okay. Then after this, we'll say Mongoose. What the hell? Mongoose. Mongoose dot connect. Okay. Then we are going to say process dot env dot mongodb mongodb url. Okay. Then we need a tiny function here which is going to say, I don't know if it is in function by the way, URL, URL, uh, yeah, that is done. Now with this in place, we need to like, see the output from our database which we are going to say const db, db representing our database, and we'll say mongoose, okay? We'll say mongoose dot connection, connection, mongoose dot connection, and that db, okay, dot, on is going to have error and we need a function that is taking in error okay and in that case we're just going to say console error i almost say log seriously dot error but you can actually put log there's really no restriction so that is that and Let's just make it visible if it connects to database so that we can be able to like, yeah. So with this, 
and instead of close we're just going to say open okay and we are just going to like have empty function and this empty function is just going to console.log console.log okay and we are going to say connected to database yeah that is that and this my friend is half worth of everything that we are supposed to do but one thing that really we are going to face problem from right now is that we don't have this mongodb url thing it is not there okay if you come to our whatever here it is completely empty even port we're going to try to create it from scratch so to speak like our port 8000 so quick and we need make it look good so just check so we need mongodb mongodb url url okay which is going to give us whatever the url of our mongodb is going to be like so let's just go to our chrome okay let me log in with my google account yeah i choose this one to log in with it so here why is it taking so long okay here will come like here and we have this project here but what we need to do right now is to create a new project like if you op if you are someone who is new to mongodb you you first need to create account after creating account then after this i'm quite sure it is not going to look the same like this but obviously you'll get maybe here they will give you a button of creating a new project just like this one let's try to create a new project suppose we click here and our project is called rest api let's just call it that name let's call it rest api okay because we like that yt part youtube let's just put it there like that and now it's working on it so project owner and everything it doesn't really matter so just click here create project you don't really need to do anything here then after this it will bring you to this to the cloud here the cloud plus and everything and with this one here now what you need to do is to build a database click on this build build database then it will bring you here and because like we are not going to really store something big there that actually will need some kind of big, bigger configuration. We are just going to choose this free, whatever, with the limited storage of 512 megabytes, so to speak. So we just come here and create our database, so to speak. The locations and everything, you can change even the name here, but they are really not necessary for you to focus on, so to speak. Huh, also okay this is a little bit fun but not entirely verify so yeah so like this now you need to like it will bring you like on this page and the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that you create the password that you can remember and at the same time a username that suits you you can't just like go with this default so to speak if you want to create a user suppose like me let me say just we are creating a user which is going to be called rest api it doesn't matter our user is called rest api all through without even anything in between and our password here is going to be called rest api one two three okay 
this is what I'm creating from my side and you make sure you create something that you can remember okay because when it comes to user and this you are going to actually use this specific values that you are putting here and in case for you to remember you need to put something that is easy for you to remember because you know how it works when it comes to this kind of stuff and another thing is here like you are needed to put uh, like this prompt is asking you to put your IP address and mostly you don't need to really be precise about this one because if you put your specific IP address maybe you are in different network then everything will change and that also will affect your connectivity with the database that's why we just prefer like you put 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 okay and that will actually work like a generic so to speak you see here 59 153 18 18 slash 35 and if you can see it is one two three four and that is why we're just mimicking the same thing here you can call this anything for me i don't really have a specific thing of way of calling it so to speak so let's just say this or maybe like the base url or something of that kind i don't know so yeah that is it now we have all this set up so let's just finish and close it like here you click here congratulations setting up access rules and everything let's just go back to the database okay here you just click on connect here okay then as it opens up just come and click on this mongodb just got something and one thing you really need to remember is that the password I was talking about, this is the real time for it, okay? Like here, just come and paste here like this. And if you can remember your password, just this, this place, remove just that word, which is put there the placeholder to say password and just say rest. API123 for my case, but for yours, it's going to be completely something else, you see? and it depends completely with what you are going to make of it so to speak so yeah i think this is this and everything is like coming in clutch so let's see if it will actually connect our database and like do everything according to the way it is supposed to just give it some small waiting and see Hmm, something happened. So let's just go back to the server and restart the server again. If there's really anything wrong with what we wrote there, but maybe like this URL name is not matching with it, so it's okay. Sometimes you change things. So let me just go there and see what's the name of that. Over the URL, yeah, I think the name has difference. So, yeah, due to these changes, it will help. You know, like we don't need to have problem every time, each and every time, each and every time. It makes us vulnerable to trouble. You know, so yeah, let's wait and see. It's connected. It's listening on this this point, and now the moment to see. yeah now connected to our database which means our database is successfully connected now the first thing that we need to do on connection of this database is to make sure that like we test our endpoint and now let's just put three hash like this that will give you will act like a separation in between and as i was talking earlier we're using post method for sign up so to speak and now here we'll just say local post I think we're still running on 8,000. I don't know if that is true. So 8,000 and we have users. And last we have sign in, sign up instead of all whatever it is. And I'm quite sure that is that based on what we can be able to like provide at the moment. So yeah. 
here. So one thing that we need to really focus on is that our content type matters, okay? Our content type matters, and our content type is application JSON, okay? So now we'll just come down here, and because we have like username, just we start writing the data immediately without even wasting time, okay? Like our username is just call it anything. Okay, like suppose if we are to go with the channel's name, hyper. Okay, then after this, we'll say full name. Full name is going to be hyper developer. Okay, then after this, we'll have things like email. Ah, you see that? We're going to have things like email which is going to be known as something of that kind suppose imagine this is a company email and we have password which is going to be admin at hyper i don't know if i can even remember it though just writing it but i don't know if i can remember it the good thing is because all the endpoints here I'm going to keep them the way they are like i'm not going to remove any endpoint and that will save me a lot yeah and that is that so let's try to run it and see actually what which kind of output is it going to give us is this hooked up or there's a problem somewhere okay things are breaking up and i'm seeing things up and down so what is wrong okay connected to database unexpected in json at the position one this json JSON feature. Okay, so where is the problem? Okay, I think it is this one. Let's save this. Yeah, I think that is the one. Let's save that. And about the breaking, no biggie. It is okay. Things break, right? So why worry about this one? It is okay. It will break eventually so yeah let's first connect to the database and let's see what is going to be out of it so after this we just continue with what we're supposed to do so connect here to a database 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 yeah it's connected to the database again and let's try also to run the same command again okay something went wrong at least this time around it is not like before just say something went wrong and but username yeah username is not correct we are saying usernames instead of username this is not the first time it is happening to me several times it have ever happened so i'm kind of used to it now boom we have seen here we have created our user you see now like we are able to create our user the result is here the user is the username is hyper. Uh, the, the username is hyper. The full name is hyper developer, and email is something. And you see here, the way it has our password. Our password is completely something that we can't really understand when it comes to real, real, real explanation of things. So, yeah, this is actually majorly what I'm talking about. And now here, this is like the first functionality of our. API, so to speak, our REST API. So let's just get back and finish the REST before it is too late, you know. So yeah, we have all we have this one already. So let's just get back to our controllers and keep going, so to speak. Yeah. Now we need sign sign in functionality because we have we are done with sign up. So we need sign in functionality. Functionalities. Okay. We need sign in functionalities. In our sign in functionality, so we're just going to create a function and we're going to call it sign in. Okay, going to call it sign in like this, and it's also going to do the same thing. We're going to use async, async middleware, so to speak, middleware. Okay, async middleware which is going to take a sync function that is taking in request and response 
request a response and after this we are just going to say const this structure email and password because this is majorly what we are going to focus on here which is going to come from the request body so to speak and now we will also have a try and catch block try and catch block catch block and what about that so yeah let's go to our trial block and let's see what is it that we are really going to focus completely on the first thing first which remains without change is actually the current user so to speak or let me say existing user where we are going to say cons existing user Yeah, existing user is going to equal to a weight and we're going to have user or user in this term is like this and we're going to have email and this email is going to be like this okay so now all we need to do is if that user is not there remember while we are creating it we are asking if that user is there but now it is quite opposite we are now asking if that user is not there you see then we need to return something right we need to return a response with the status code of 404 okay which is going to send in in json still with message user doesn't exist kind of stuff you see the message user not found or user does not exist i just go with anything which is ready so no problem we can go with user not found so let's also check for password but for password is going to be a boolean because we're going to be is the password correct so it entirely depends is the password correct then we're going to have a wait Okay, then we are going to have mm -hmm. here what we are going to do is to compare the password. Okay, to compare the password and existing user dot password. Okay. We're going to compare the password and existing user password, so to speak. So yeah, that is that. And now we need to focus on okay our token, which is JWT, so to speak. And this is kind of is still under yeah, that is that. And let's just say const token. Mm, is everything okay? Compare this. On comparing is correct. Yeah, is correct. Invalid. Please try again. Yeah, we have another one also. Like we'll say if is password correct. If not is password correct which means a negation of password correct okay then we want to do something what is it that we want to do we want to send a status okay 4000 okay 400 400 here don't json Then we have message. And we'll say password. Invalid password. Please try again. Invalid password. So, okay. That is that. And now we need to say const. 
token which is going to equal to JWT okay dot sign okay which is going to take an email and the email is going to equal to existing user dot email and we are going to have ID which is going to equal to existing user dot ID but just like in creating it in our sign up we want to make sure that the underscore is always there because that is the format of our database so to speak so just enter inside here and say comma and remember secret what we put there secret okay then after this we'll say expires in then we gave a specific expiration time so to speak expires in okay for our case it is going to be five hours in order to expire then after this we are we, we are actually almost fixed with everything okay we are almost fixed with everything now what we need to focus on is that we are going to just like send the response back to the user okay which is going to be that and our token is going to be token and our result is going to be that one so let's just start from result to make it look good so to speak and yeah we say result is going to be existing user existing user oh. and apart from result we have token and this token it will remain just token we are not going to repeat it because it is actually okay the way it is so let's come down here to catch the error now because we are done we try block now it is to work on the error block where we say console.error it is whatever the error is which is going to come from there and we need to send some response to the user with the status 500 okay with the status 500 and the message is something went wrong please try again later okay something yeah yeah you just put this and that is that my friend so save it yeah that is it about our sign-in functionality so to speak so let's just go here and try to check if we can actually be able to sign in using this functionality is that we have already put in place so here we have the sign-in here and we just need to come down here and instead of like only exporting sign up we'll just say sign in like that and that will definitely work and now we need to do something like we'll just come to yeah here, here okay then let's just look at this one like this and then instead of sign up we'll just say sign in Oh, it is supposed to just log in, no problem. But anyway, let's just say sign in like this. Which in many cases I, I, I will just prefer login, but anyway, it is okay. Sign in. If we are to search for it, it is from controller and boom, we have both of them here. Now we need to go here and actually create another endpoint as we always do refresh then after this a post is actually going to be http localhost yeah localhost a thousand user this oh, sign in something like that i guess yeah then what do we 
what do you what do we want in order to sign in we have content type of application wow. application and application type is creation so the trick is to give us a little bit of freedom sort of thing and when we are logging in we are logging in with email which in our case is actually going to be that email i think it is correct and we need password okay password we need password and the password is going to be admin just here it's going to be admin at hyper i think yeah that is that that is our password the email and the password so yeah that is that so let's try to send it and see if it will actually fetch something from our database mm, user not found why oh okay the email we actually gave is completely different so we need the email which is like this so let's just copy this email okay and paste it here then let's send it again yeah it actually found our user here you see like it's working right so now our sign in functionality is working very well now we need to go back and finish the two which is delete and delete and update functionality so to speak so let's start with update yeah update functionality functionality yeah update functionality i'm just going to pop it in like so and if you if you look through it yes sir. if you look through it you can see like all the functionalities and everything is quite a little bit similar in everything here going you know nothing really completely complex so yeah this is the update functionality you know i just wrote it and just finish it there and so you just like the finished part of it so here we just need to come down here and say update okay like that and then we need a delete functionality whoa i didn't even put p by the way update yeah like that then we need to put delete functionality so delete functionality like that similar also i'm just going to pop that one in as well and this is our delete functionality with all these things around so yeah that is that i'm quite sure you, you have seen what what is going on here and yeah that is it here like we're just saying like if the user is found to have that specific id that we need then that is the user we are looking for otherwise no it's not the user we are looking for yeah just a few things nothing really like much here so we're just going to export it and here we just say delete user so let's click delete user like that. Yeah, and save this one. And where are we going? This is routes. Yeah, let's go to routes. Then here we'll have privileges to have two more, and here we'll call it update. Update, and here we'll call it delete. Delete like that then in update here we're just going to say update and obviously it will just give us the option from update which is from the controller and here we're going to have delete user delete user which is also here then it's just like automatically see now with this my friends we have all of our routes that we actually want so let's just go ahead and create for all of them a specific routes for update we're going to use patch 
okay and here we will say http local post user then after this we'll just say update okay and for term of uh, for the case of update we need content type which i think is going to be application json here okay and here it will depend with what we actually want to update because one thing is if we say update here we are actually going to take or we're going to put in the whatever the id here we're going to put in the id of that specific thing that we need to actually update like suppose this is it so when we run this one we're definitely going to get the output here then this specific id here is what we need and we'll copy this id and just come and paste it here okay after pasting it there then oh okay i have it already so after pasting it there we'll just come here and try to change anything suppose for example if we say like the username instead of calling it hyper we want to call it something else okay we want to maybe just put everything together to be hyperdev as a username okay for this specific whatever then let's try to run it and immediately you'll see the change and instead of username being this the username will change to hyperdev so let's run and see okay, if i check my endpoint is there something i didn't do right oh you will have just told me earlier ha look at this nonsense yeah that's creepy that's creepy obviously that's creepy imagine wasting all this time just because i can't figure that out anyway so here if you try to update or oh, still give it a minute yep now we are connected to the trapeze again now if we try to you see hyperdev everything changed and if we try to delay it yeah now user not found which means it is completely deleted so yeah that is it now this brings us to the end of this specific video and yeah i'm quite sure like you learned something new about how to deal with rest api when it comes to express js and yeah this is actually the entirety of the knowledge that i'm talking about and in case if you need the code I'm actually going to just put the code in my GitHub repository and I'll put the, the link in the description below. You can just find the link from there, go to the code and check through it. But, you know, I suggest that you write it out yourself, go through it again and again in order to understand how REST API really works when it comes to like applications like express if you're working with, with express so to speak so yeah that is it and i'm quite sure you have picked something new and if you do don't forget to smash that like button and yeah as always see you in the next video and hey thanks for watching bye